Thank you for renting with Crewmate Rentals. This orientation video is to get you familiar with the pontoon boat you're going to be renting, the equipment that's on the boat, uh, what your check-in process is going to be, what your return process is going to be, and try to answer any safety questions you might have. Um, so with that, let's jump into it. The pontoon boat will either be parked on the port hand side of the boat, right here next to the dock, port hand being the left hand side of the dock, uh, left hand side of the boat, or it will be in the boathouse. When you return the boat, just make sure you put it back where you found it. Um, now let's jump on board and we'll go over equipment. All right, here's the pontoon boat that we have at the uh, Spring Point location. You can see it's a nice brand new pontoon boat. Couches in the front, two small couches in the back. Pontoon boat does come with a clean cooler, so please leave it clean when you're done so it's uh, clean for the next guest. Uh, and let's go over equipment real fast. All of your adult universal size life jackets are going to be stowed up underneath the seats throughout the boat. There's 10 adult life jackets on the boat. Make sure you don't lose those. Anyone under the age of 13 needs to have a life jacket on at all times. Doesn't matter if the boat's on, off, moving or not. So make sure you bring any children's size life jackets you might need for your group. The boat also has two anchors, one under each front corner pocket seat. Just make sure you keep the anchor clean and don't bang the anchor against the side of the boat when you pull it up. <clears throat> Next to the driver's seat, we have the throw cushion. This is the first thing you're going to throw in case of an emergency, so it needs to stay out and readily available. Also behind the driver's seat is your fire extinguisher. That's latched to the floor, so just keep that where it is until you need it. Uh, hopefully you will never need it. Also next to the driver's console, we have our map of Lake Wiley. On the front page of the map, we have the rules of the road, docking instructions, anchoring instructions, and the different uh, buoys you'll encounter on the lake. Inside the map is a full map of Lake Wiley with um, depths and popular areas to stop at. Make sure you don't lose that. Also, last to the the, to the driver's console is your return checklist and your anchoring checklists. On the driver's console we have your fuel gauge which good rule of thumb is use a third of your fuel to get where you're going, a third to get back, and a third in reserve. That's to make sure you don't run out of fuel. It's a good rule of thumb to use. RPM gauge, um, if you're really trying to be fuel efficient, best um, RPM for this boat is about 4,500 RPMs. That's the most fuel efficient, um, so that'll, that'll help you not burn as much fuel. Speedometer is here, and the depth gauge is here. A good uh, thing to know about this depth gauge is that it will not operate properly at full speed. Uh, the way the sonar works, it just shoots the sonar straight down and straight back up. So if you're running at full speed, it's not going to give you an accurate depth. You shouldn't be running at full speed unless you know you're in the center of the lake and in deep water. So just use this to, uh, when you're approaching sandbars or approaching any kind of area that you're not familiar with the depth, because um, this only works at low speed. The buttons on the dashboard, you have a toggle switch for your navigation lights. You have a courtesy light, which is an interior light. And then the power switch. The power switch just brings power to the uh, radio and the depth finder. Other than that, you do not need the power switch on to operate the boat, but you do need to make sure that you leave this power switch off when you're done using the boat, otherwise it will kill the battery. So this power switch always needs to be down uh, when you're not using it. Down here we have a Bluetooth radio. If you turn the radio on and switch the source to Bluetooth, you'll be able to hook it up to your phone, otherwise it just plays regular, regular radio. Alright, back here in the back, the rear seat behind the driver's seat, we have a dry box. Inside this dry box is going to be the registration for the boat, the key to the boat, a safety whistle, and some other items. <clears throat> when you arrive, this lock box will be this dry box will be locked. Once your first day of your rental, we will text you the code to get into the dry box so you can access the key. It's just important the last day of your reservation uh, with the pontoon boat to make sure you put the key back in this dry box and lock it so it's um, so the boat is secure. So that's it for equipment on the boat. Just make sure you send us a text message that all the equipment is here when you arrive so that um, we know you've got, got all the equipment you need. And uh, we'll ask you to text us when you're done to make sure the equipment is, is still available. All right. 
All right, on the back of the boat, I wanted to go over a few things. First and foremost is the prop. When you arrive, we're gonna ask you to send us a picture of the prop before you get started on your reservation. And then part of the checkout procedure is going to be sending us a picture of the prop so that we know what condition it's in when you finish your reservation. Um, so make sure you keep the prop in good condition. The stainless steel ladder right here needs to be up at all times unless you're obviously anchored and using it to get in and out of the boat. Please do not drive the boat with the ladder down. It burns fuel and eventually just rips the ladder off. So it's important to always have that up and latched when you're operating the boat. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is the gas tank back here. This is obviously where you're going to fill up the boat when you need gas. But also, the fuel gauge on these pontoon boats can sometimes get stuck um, and not read the correct fuel. So a good way to double check your fuel is to look on the back of the fuel tank. So if you just come back here and look on the back of the fuel tank, you can actually see the water, the fuel line in the fuel tank. Um, so I can see I've got about three quarters of a tank here just by looking at where this line falls on the tank. That's a great way to double check your fuel and know exactly how much fuel you have left. So always do that. All right, let's talk about safety on the pontoon boat. Uh, first thing to note is anyone under 13 needs to have a life jacket on at all times. It doesn't matter if the boat's on, off, moving or not. We do not provide children's size life jackets, so you need to make sure you bring those with you. Um, you will get a $150 ticket if you do not have a life jacket on uh, anyone that's under 13. So it's a pretty hefty fine uh, for not having those life jackets. Um, the adult size life jackets are stowed out throughout the boat. They can remain stowed unless you're a troubled swimmer or don't know how to swim. It's a good idea to have your adult life jackets on. But as a company policy, it doesn't matter if you're an Olympic swimmer or not. If you're getting in the water, we want you to have a life jacket on. Uh, while the boat's on, we want everybody seated at all times. Don't have kids hanging over the side of the boat or especially at the front of the boat. Absolutely no bow riding. Don't have anybody sitting on the front of the boat while the boat is on. Make sure everybody is inside the pontoon rails at all time when the motor is on. Um, the front of the boat can actually be kind of dangerous even if you're just standing up inside the pontoon rails. If you the boat encounters a big wake or the driver has to make a sudden adjustment on the throttle handle, if you or anything goes over the front of the boat, there's nothing that the driver can do from stopping you from hitting the prop. So the front of the boat can be kind of dangerous. You don't want to just stand up uh, at the front of the boat. Um, the most important thing with safety is also to identify a secondary lookout. The secondary lookout's job, or first off, the secondary lookout is another adult on board other than the driver, and their job is uh, to help the driver identify debris in the waterway and navigate around it, identify any other boaters that might not be paying attention, and to keep track of anybody in the water that's swimming, make sure they're not in distress, make sure everyone is out of the water and back on board and seated, and the ladder is up and latched before they give permission to the driver to start the engine. Um, also, the secondary lookout's job is to just help, help the driver maintain the boat's order. Um, so just pick out your secondary lookout before you start every day. Um, when you return the pontoon boat, just make sure you clean everything up, lock the key up in the lockbox, and then follow the return process on the return checklist. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to crewmates. There's some contact information on the map, uh, but also, obviously, in case of any emergency, you're going to want to dial 911. Uh, any non-emergency, would you would either contact us or the numbers on the map. Uh, thank you for renting from crewmates, and we look forward to having you here at the Springpoint property.